happen. I come to you in the most precious name of Abba Father, sharing with you a warning and a dream that I have been given to share with the remnant of the Almighty God. So before I get started, let me just say a quick prayer and then we'll go right in, okay? Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be at well, when I say when I say things, I can't refer to these things as people because they they look like people, but they weren't people. They were a mixture of the walking Z O M B I E S. Um, they look like regular people. Um, they also had a sense of like a foreign intelligence in them. Um, also. An, an unidentified intelligence in them and they were also numb they they also had a demonic presence in them as well they were numb they had no feelings they had no heart no remorse they were just out of it but they knew it was like they knew who I was so what God has been sharing with me is a lot of his people think that just because you have the mark or you have the seal on you that you're going to be um you know protected it's true you're going to be protected but the seal is not to hide you the seal that you are marked and sealed with is for you to stand out so if you're marked if you have been marked with the seal of god you're going to stand out to these things to the people to everyone in the world they're going to know who you are it's like the seal of god that is on your forehead that has been placed there by the angels is it's being it's a beacon of light it's beaming a, a light within you so no matter where you go these things as well as regular people they will see you they will you, you will stand out so in this dream um i saw this man he was hiding in this area where it was like a house but then there was a boat and his wife was pregnant. It was a white man with a, a wife and she was blonde hair. So I don't know why I have to mention that. I guess I have to mention that to let y'all know that this applies to everybody. It's not just one culture, one nationality, one race. It doesn't just apply to if you're a uh, Christian or if you're religious or if you love God. It, it This is going to apply for the entire planet. This is going to apply for everyone. So the guy was hiding it was a house but under his house there was some type of latch under the boat where he made this whole underground area for him and his wife and to hide and she was pregnant but she was like nine months pregnant so he was hiding her there but he would leave out from time to time to go get her food but one day one of the neighbors saw him leave and when the neighbor saw him leave the neighbor was one of these things and this neighbor was like a walking, you know, walking, I'll just say a walking, you know what, it was a walking thing, because I want this word to get out. So it was a walking thing. And it saw the guy leave. And then it hopped the wall, just like he hopped the wall, it found the keys that he hid. And then it went inside of this underground area and the wife, she was so huge. You can tell she was at least nine months pregnant with like twins or triplets or something because she was real like balloon big out there, but extra, extra. So he went, he raped her and he killed her. So um, hopefully I can say those words. But um, so basically she was gone and then it shifted from her to me seeing that these areas of these stores where it's like God was showing me that all this land that you see, all of a sudden you see construction workers all of a sudden in your area. So these construction workers, they're building huge buildings. So have you noticed they're building apartments, but these new apartments, they're not like the old apartments. These are apartments that can fit maybe like two to 500 people inside of one apartment complex. Cause they're like clutter, a cluster of apartments. 
and then the houses they're not single houses some are single houses some are huge but a lot of them are cluster houses where they're just you know you come outside the door and there you are right there next to your neighbor you can see everyone can see each other there's no backyard your backyard is facing your neighbor so this is what they're conditioning the society to head for so everyone can see everyone so they're opening up these fields i saw these open fields everywhere but then what caught my attention was the store was in an op a really huge open field but the store was huge it was like two costcos and sam clubs and walmarts put together right but there was only about you know like the first aisle of food at aldi's it was only like one aisle like when you first walk in there's that fresh fruit aisle that was the only amount of food that was in that whole entire warehouse so what i was being shown was that coming ahead is they're going to use these warehouses slash stores as um, ways to pull people out of hiding. So people are going to think that these are stores, but they're not stores. They're just something that's there to pull you out of hiding. So with that being said, I'm also to tell you, there are some alerts and some commercials that are going around right now. It's They're flooded like big time off of the social medias right now. And they're telling people, um, you know, call this number and we'll give you your... Um, you know, $400 a month that you get $1,500 a month and you get free, um, you know, insurance from the government call this number. That's not what they're telling you guys that that's for. That is a tracking system. They know a lot of people went underground and a lot of people need money. So they're using that as a tracking system to pull people from out of hiding. So back to the dream. Now, another part of the dream, I kept running, but at this point in time I was running like with my family and I end up finding this area where the guy ran with ran with his wife and they were hiding on the ground but I went up to where the boat latch thing was at and I we were trying to figure out how to open it and finally we figured out how to open it but we opened it and went in there but we can only stay for a little bit of time because we end up having to run and leave because it's like they put some type of tag or sensor inside so they knew that someone was someone was in there so what i was seeing in my dream was that um you know how everyone's you know they're doing some type of prepping or um you know they have like these bug out bags and things like that there was none of that y'all like there was no one making no full course meal like you were lucky if you got a piece of bread or if you got a granola bar for for three people to share but no one could cook. It's like the whole world. And when I say the whole world, everybody was in hiding. So, and then there was no sleeping in. Someone had to keep watch. You were always constantly on the run. We were always constantly on the run. It's like, it seemed like the second we find a place to rest or to sleep, we had to jump up again because someone was coming or someone was chasing us. So, but who, who these things that were chasing us, they were always trying to inject us with these needles, with these things, the stuff inside of these needles. But we were always refusing it or rejecting it. So every time you turn around, we're always constantly running or constantly trying to get away. But at the end of the dream, I was noticing that a couple of my family members were standing next to these things. And I ran out of this area, it looked like a nursing home area, and I ran out of this area. But at this point, I was exhausted. I was tired. It seemed like I was running for at least minimum five days straight without any sleep at all. And this thing, like first they used to chase me, but then at the very end, like when I got ready to wake up, one of the things stood back next to my family members. And it's like it, it wasn't even trying to come at them. It was... It the thing one of the things there was two of them actually there was three but there was two at this point one stood next to my family members and the other one it just it went to chase me but I was tired and I was running at with all of my might at full speed ahead but this thing at this point it didn't even run it just walked towards me but it's walking was like you know how you see something like in a scary movie and it walks but it like walks run or walks slide walk slide. That's what this thing did towards me. So when I saw it coming towards me, I was like, I'm I'm just tired. I, I can't, I can't, I can't even, I'm tired. I can't even run no more. I'm just tired. 
So I woke up with this thing coming towards my face, but it wasn't running. It was just walk sliding. And it was looking at me like, yeah, I got you. Or yeah, I'm coming for you. So I woke up to that notion, knowing that that's what the thing's going to look like, you know, when I see it, because I know that not only was this a dream, but it was a premonition. So um, I also noticed in this dream how the people like my family members that were standing back next to the one that wasn't running or chasing with the other one. What I was noticing that at some point in time, it seemed like these things were coming after like the leaders, the remnant of God, those who were seeking God's face the most, those who were given instructions from God. They were trying to shut them down. They were chasing chasing them, coming after them specifically. But the people like your family members and your friends that were standing next to these people, they weren't coming after them at some point in time. And I was picking up that they weren't coming after them because it's like they weren't no threat. They were going to comply with whatever these people told them because the only reason they weren't complying was because of what the people of God was telling them. The only reason they knew they were bad is because the people of God, the remnant of God, were telling them that these people were not good. So after they got rid of the remnant of God, that's when the others were able to just follow suit because they had no further instructions because they weren't seeking God for themselves. They weren't getting the answers for themselves. So the dream was showing me that now is the time to prepare. Now is the time to get in shape. Now is the time to seek God's face, to get the answer straight from God. Don't look for your information off the internet. You have to build a personal relationship with the living God because it is only God who will give you instructions. It was God that was giving me instructions in the dream to when to wake up, when to run. Um, we would know when to run, when to escape, when to hide. We, it's like we would wake up a few seconds you know, before someone came in the building. Um, another thing I noticed as well is the guy who died um, in the dream, whose wife passed away as well, um, when he left to go get some food, they ended up um, taking him out, right? They took him out, but there was a knowing in my spirit in the dream that wherever he went, whether he went to heaven or hell or he was in the grave, wherever he went, his blood was crying out from the grave. It's like he was trying to come back from another realm to say, I got to go tell my wife that, you know, I passed on. I got to tell my wife that I'm no longer on earth no more. I got to go tell her that I'm not there. So therefore she'll know, therefore she'll be safe. So the guy was doing everything in his power to try to come back from the grave to let his loved one know that he was no longer on the earth. So therefore she can be in safety because it's like she was inside but she was comfortably waiting for him versus like keeping watch. Even the fact that she got caught off guard by a stranger coming inside. It's like she got so comfortable with her husband's word that she wasn't even inside herself keeping watch. So I feel like that was symbolic to say you got to personally keep watch yourself because you never know if the people that leave your home, if they're going to make it back or if they're going to be able to give you a warning or if they'll give you a warning at all. You could be the one that gets the warning. So another thing that I was noticing is that these things, they have no heart. They have no feelings. They, they, when they talk, and this is interesting too, because, um, I had an, a few encounters with angels and I would see angels in my dream, but angels, when they talk, they don't talk with their mouth. They use their eyes when they communicate. So these things, that's what they were. They were fallen angels. These things, they were communicating as well with their eyes. So they were communicating with their eyes. As they were communicating with their eyes, they were just, there was no life in them. They were just completely dead. And many people feel like the unidentified flying objects, they feel like those are their friends or they're coming here to help them or to assist them or save them. No, those are not your friends. The Nephilims, all those returning giants, they're going to come back. There will be walking amongst us. They'll be returning again, but they will know that you're chosen of God. They're jealous of you. They know that you have the seal. They once had the seal themselves. They once have the had the light themselves. So they're going to be trying to give you 
this SHOT, which I feel is very symbolic of what's coming up ahead because no man is able to buy or to sell without this mark. And people were going inside of their houses, but as they were going inside of their houses, you can tell that they were also like walking zombies. Like they were like people, but they were injected with some type of some type of weird intelligence like some type of foreign intelligence and if they saw you they immediately called they snitched on you so there's coming a system where they're going to immediately turn you in they're immediately going to call on you so god's people you're going to be running you're going to be in hiding so now is not the time to sleep in now is not the time to say oh i'm gonna get an extra hour when that alarm set your alarm wake up to pray when that alarm goes off get up say your prayers we're stepping into a time where you don't get to say, I don't feel like exercising right now. You're going to have to exercise. And if you're out of shape, you got to get in shape. If you don't feel like doing 10 push-ups, do three push-ups because those three push-ups may be the strength that you need to strengthen your body to help you jump over this fence or a gate. I was having to run through windows. I was having to hop through boats. I was having to go through windows, between windows, between windows, between boats. And it was like obstacle courses. Like I got no rest at all. And I was constantly on the run, constantly on the move, constantly. Um, there was days without sleep. So I know that's what we're coming into. And I feel that this is a very strong warning from the Lord for his people to get ready. I feel that the Lord is telling us that too many of his people are not seeking his face. You're too comfortable and there's going to come a time where you're going to be on your knees. Your knees are going to be bleeding for the Lord to help you. But now is a time to cry out to God to help you. I also know that there's a lot of people who feel like God is going to protect them during those hours. But right now, there's a lot of people who... Um, are already infiltrated. There's a lot of people who have already turned. Like these are not your friends anymore. These are not your family members anymore. They've already turned. So you thinking that that's who you, that's your friend that you're talking to, or you're thinking that's your family member that you're dealing with, but but that's not. Those are people who've already turned that the devil is already using to come against you to distract you from praying to God, to distract you to make you feel like you want to go back out in the world, or do the things that. Um, you used to do in the world to get back at them. But God says that if you do those things that you will surely die in your sin, don't let these things or these people distract you because they're no longer people. They've already changed. They've already turned. They've, they're already um, infiltrated with some type of foreign um, substance in them. So I asked God to give me a Bible verse that will confirm the dream that not only he gave me, so I'm going to read to you now what he's given me. And that's Jeremiah. Let's see. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 21. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent unto him Pasher, the son of Malachi, and Zephaniah, the son of Manesh, the priest, saying, Inquire. I pray thee of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so, be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus saith ye, say to Ze Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls. I And that's interesting because in the dream, there was no walls nowhere, y'all. Like they're talking about building a wall. There's probably a big wall that surrounds America, but walls and fences. If I saw a wall or a fence, it was very low. So I'm, I'm going to continue with the word um, back at verse four of Jeremiah. 21. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye stand, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them into the midst of this city. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. 
I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such are left in the city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hands of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity nor mercy. And unto his people thou shalt, shalt, thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He that abideth in the city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. For I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given to the hands of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. So there it goes again where I was saying that God is coming to Babylon. God is bringing fire to Babylon. And touching the house of the king of Judah, say, Hear ye, hear ye the word of the Lord. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury goes out like fire, and burn none that quenches it, because of the evil of your doing. Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitants of the valley, and rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us, or who shall enter into our, inhabitation, our inhabitations? But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doing, saith the Lord, and I will kindle a fire, in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all the things round about. So that's Jeremiah 21, and that's the word that the Lord has given me as confirmation as to what it is that he's bringing upon the people here in Babylon, um, especially for those um, who are refusing to repent, especially those who are saying, well, the Lord's taking too long. He's taking too long, so I have time to go right now to, you know, um, be in my sin or to cheat or to smoke or to do my drugs or to overeat. And the Lord was just sharing with me yesterday. Um, he was saying that Yeshua, when he was here, he had to discipline his flesh. He was constantly having to discipline his flesh. And this is why he had to go on the 40 day fast. And while he was constantly fasting and while he was constantly waking up his disciples saying, you know, his people, his disciples are sleeping as the enemy is at the doors, at the, as the enemy is at the gateway. And I feel that that's what he's saying now about God's people. God's people are sleeping on the times. You're not praying right now. You're sleeping. You're too comfortable for the hour that is at hand and you're not disciplining your flesh. You're getting uh, more comfortable in your drugs or your pills or your drinking or your cheating or your distractions, and you're allowing the devil to tell you, oh, you have more time, you have more time, you don't. Because God is saying those very things, you will die in your sins. God was also sharing with me um, just last night that the um, the tribe of Judah, the the chosen ones, the um, the ones that he's calling his own, but more uh, specifically, the... Um, the black Americans, let me say it like that. The black American people, the black American people are the most hated people out of all the people on the planet. No matter where you go, everyone hates them. They're, they don't even have a chance at all. People hate them and no race, culture or nationality wants to claim them at all. But they're the biggest influence on the entire world from culture to hip hop to dress code, to twerking, to dancing. And if these people are not a chosen priesthood, a royal priesthood, then why does the whole world hate them? Why is the whole, why is the whole world influenced by them? And why is God so angry at his people, at these people? Because they're an influence over the whole planet. In the book of Revelation, it goes into talking about how Hold on. In the book of Revelation, it goes into talking about how God's chosen has 
has influenced the whole world and the whole world is following suit of the chosen of God's elect of God of the tribe of um, the 12 tribes of Israel of the tribe tribe of Judah. So I feel that God is saying that many are called yet few are chosen and there are many who are chosen, but the reason that these people are chosen is because they're the only ones who are bold enough to go out there. When God says, shout and warn my people, they're the only ones that's bold enough to go out there and shout. We are heading in, into a time where the entire world is going to hate you because of your belief. They're going to um, slaughter you. They're going to come after you. People overseas right now, they're being filleted alive. Do you know what filleted is? You Like when you fillet a steak or a slice it in little tiny slices for their belief. Like Chinese people, like they have Bibles and they remember their Bibles by hard because if they're caught with that Bible, they're, you know, taken out alive or taken from this planet. But yet, People here in Babylon, they have five and six Bibles in their house and they walk past it all day, every day. And they say, oh, I'm too tired to pray. We're too comfortable. And God is going to make sure that you know that you're too comfortable. This is not the time. I beseech ye, brothers and sisters, even if you're tired, even if it's dark outside, train yourself to get up, train your children to get up, you know, make them run with you, make them pray with you, make them you, their blood is on your hand. You are the parent. If you don't discipline them as the Bible states, discipline them. Like even I have a, a thing with that. Like I don't, I haven't whooped my kids, but I can get punished for that. According to the Bible, discipline them, it, it require of them, children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. If you mistreat your wives, your prayers will be hindered. Wives, respect your husbands no matter what they're doing to you. I know it gets on your nerves. I know it's annoying. But know that the devil is using them to distract you. The devil is using them so much to distract you. But you also have to remember that the sins of the forefathers have fallen on the children. And we come from a generation where the women, especially the women in Babylon, the government has been their husbands. Woman, you can have anything that you want, just don't have no man in the house. So they were given welfare checks or they were given job positions or titles in the world to where now we look at our men as they're nothing or even if they make a little mistake, we're ready to like run and leave them because it's annoying. It gets on our nerves, but and it, it also can bring you to a place to where you don't respect him. If you don't respect him, the Bible says that we're required to respect them. We're required to lift them up. So, and even if you're not married, you're required to hold yourself, to sustain yourself, to keep yourself for the Lord. God is your husband. You are to chase after God, to love God with all of your heart as if God is your man, because he is. And the same thing with you, men. God is coming back for a church, a bride. God is your girl. God is requiring you to be faithful to him. Your loyalty to God now is going to mark how God is going to be loyal to you then in the coming hours ahead. How God is going to protect you coming ahead. So... I'm about to get off now because I'm about to go and go into my prayer closet. I don't care. I pray all day, every day, but according to the dreams and the visions and the signs and wonders that he's been giving me, it's not enough. It's not enough for what's coming. We're about to be on the run. We are not going to be able to sleep. I don't care. Even if you're tired, these are the last days of you getting, you know, five, six, even two hours of sleep. You're lucky if you get that. We're going into a time where you won't sleep for days. We're going into a time where you won't eat for days. We're going into a time where there will be no prep food or supplies left for you. You will depend on the Lord to give you manna from heaven. You will depend on the Lord to look up and you'll see a rock and you'll cry out to the Lord and say, God, I haven't eaten for days or I haven't eaten for 40 days or 21 days because you're used to that because you were fasting, because you were obedient to the Lord. So the Lord will say, okay, here's some bread. I will turn this bread into a rock, but that's going to require your faith 
according to your faith, that's how you're going to make it. When I was looking around in my dream, it was like half the planet was gone and no one was alive. And the people that were alive, they were in hiding. And if they were not in hiding, they were already injected with some type of foreign stuff, substance to where it, they stayed inside anyways. They stayed inside. They stayed out of the out of the the public. And if they did go to the public, they came outside to get one or two things from the store. But they had something in their body that allowed them to go out to purchase these things. We're getting ready to go into hiding. We're getting ready to have to run. This ain't the time to be sleeping. This is like God is requiring you. Like Yeshua was telling his disciples, wake up. The enemy is at the door and you're sleeping. This ain't the time to sleep immediately. If I were you, I beseech you to go yourself, read Jeremiah 21, go yourself, read the book of revelations, go yourself, chime into the book of Enoch. It will tell you about the times that we're in, but most importantly, develop and build your relationship with the Holy spirit. Don't care what your husband does. Don't care what your wife does. If they acted up, let them clown because you may have to run by yourself. They may already be infiltrated. You may have to leave on your own. You may have to leave them. If your children clown, you may have to leave them too. How much do you love the Lord? Is your heart after the Lord so much that you're willing to leave this world, be in the world, but not of it? It's required of you to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, body, and soul. The world as we know it is gone. But people like Morpheus said in the Matrix, they're going to do everything in their power to get it to go back to how it used to be. But it's never America and it will, it will never be great again. And that's what they told you and they put the they put those people in place to make you feel as if America was going to be great again, but it's not. America will never be great again. It's an illusion at this point. It's an illusion to get you to tap into the matrix, to take on their systems and their foreign and entities that will be placed in so many of your bodies because you're going to be hungry because you didn't train your body to fast. You didn't train your body to pray. You believe other people when they told you that God wasn't real, that Jesus wasn't real or Yeshua wasn't real because his name doesn't start with a J. There were no J's in the 1600s. So if you had a relationship with him, you would know that it's not about religion. It's about relationship. And if you had a relationship with him, you would know that Yeshua don't care if you call him Jesus. You would know that there is power in the name Jesus. But you're too busy listening to other people tell you how to serve him, how to pray to him. You're too busy looking for foreign galactic beings and higher spirit beings to 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 come to talk to you. Oh, yeah, you about to draw them in. All right. And trust me, when I say they're not on your side, they're going to get you to turn. If you're seeking them now, if you're seeking foreign galactic beings now, if you're after Anunnaki's and UFO giants now, the fallen angels now, if you're seeking out that more then or tarot cards or higher consciousness or chakra balancing and all that. If you're seeking out that new age practice more than you're seeking out the living God, then you're already in trouble. You're already in, 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 in danger of hell and fire. You're already in danger of hell and damnation. I pray for your soul. I pray that God will open your eyes, that he will take the scales off of your eyes before it will too, it's too late. That he will have mercy on you. That he will have mercy on all of us before it's too late. We're not worthy of even getting these warnings. Some people not even going to get no warnings. But we're getting warnings. We're getting warnings to prepare us. And it's not just to prepare yourself for food. It's not just to prepare yourself for medical supplies and stock up. What about prepare your relationship? Prepare your heart for the times that are at hand. Prepare your love for God. Because you're going to need that love for God. Whether you have no food or nothing. You're going to have to. If they say I'm going to take you out. Or if you don't want this food or if you don't take this mark to get this food, you're going to have to be like, all right, um, bye, baby. Mommy loves you or bye, husband. I love you or bye, wife. I love you or bye, mama. I love you. But how much do you love God more than you love the things of this world? That's the question you should be asking yourself this day. That's yourself. That's the question you should be disciplining yourself about right now because your test is coming. Not only is your test is coming, your test is here.